Avatar The Way of Water is finally here, and to help you be ready, I'm going to cover everything you need to know before watching it, including a film overview, the world of Avatar lore, what's new in Avatar 2 story-wise, spoiler free of course, and what cinema format is best to watch it in. So let's get started. Avatar The Way of Water, or Avatar 2 for short, is the sequel to Avatar, which was released back in 2009 and was the highest grossing film of all time. And, just like the first, Avatar 2 is a science fiction epic directed by James Cameron, who is considered to be the king of blockbusters due to his track record of groundbreaking movies, including the original Avatar, Titanic, and some of the best sequels ever made, with Aliens and Terminator 2. The movie has a runtime of 3 hours and 12 minutes, including credits. It will be the first part of a four film saga, which consists of Avatar 2, 3, 4, and 5. Together the films will form a complete story, and yet each movie can be watched standalone. So if you haven't seen the first Avatar, you can still watch Avatar 2. Though I would recommend watching the first Avatar beforehand, as it's a great setup for the sequel, but it's by no means compulsory. Cameron was given a $1 billion budget to create the Avatar saga, or $250 million for each movie, though it's reported that Avatar 2 is massively over budget at around $400 million which would make it the most expensive movie ever made. The production was five years long, and that's not including the many years of preparation beforehand. In true James Cameron fashion, the film would be packed with technological innovations, such as underwater motion capture, revolutionary water CG, and even further improved 3D. Before getting into what's new for Avatar 2, here are seven key things in Avatar lore that are important to know. Pandora the alien world in the Avatar movies. It's a moon of Polyphemus, which is a gas giant that orbits Alpha Centauri A, a star 4.37 light years away from Earth. The Na'vi. They are 10 feet tall, blue-skinned humanoids that live in harmony with nature and are natives of Pandora. Avatars. An avatar is a genetically engineered human-Na'vi hybrid, which can act as a vessel for a human mind. Sahelu. A part of the anatomy of creatures of Pandora, which allows these creatures to connect their nervous systems with others, linking their minds. Ewa, also known as the All Mother or Great Mother, she is the guiding force of life on Pandora, and the deity which the Na'vi worship. Unobtainium, a mineral found on Pandora, which is a room temperature superconductor and extremely useful for human technology. The RDA or the Resources Development Administration, it's a powerful human corporation in charge of interstellar travel to Pandora and the mining operations on it. Now on to what to expect in Avatar 2. First off, the movie takes place 15 years after the original movie, and the main characters are back, including Jake Sully, the main protagonist from the first movie, who was originally human but became Na'vi by the end after transferal into his Avatar body. We also have Neytiri returning, a member of the Omatakaya tribe who is going to be playing an even bigger role, and she's now a mother and has a family with Jake. They've added four children to their family, three of which are biologically theirs, starting with the eldest being Netiam, the young warrior who looks up to his dad. Then there's Loak, the troublemaker who finds an unexpected friend out at sea, and the youngest being Tuk, who is small in size and mighty in courage. And lastly, there's Kiri the adopted child of the Sully family, who has an affinity for nature. Some people speculate the human child Spider is another adopted Sully child, and others say he's just a family friend. There's been no official confirmation of this outside of the film, so everyone will have to watch it to find out. To quickly cover the extended family, we have Neteri's parents, her mother and leader of the Omatakaya Moa, who is an Avatar 2, and Neteri's father, Etukan, who died in the first movie. Natiri also had a sister who died before the events of the first movie called Silwanin, and Jake obviously had his twin brother Tom, who is also dead. Outside of the Sully family, we have Colonel Miles Quaritch returning, who many will remember as the villain from the first movie, who ended up dying from two arrows to the chest from Natiri. He's back from the dead, although he's not entirely the same. He's something new, a recombinant or recon for short. These are Avatar soldiers implanted with the memories of human soldiers that previously died on Pandora. And as you can probably guess, these recoms are created by the humans who are also returning. Everything we had in the original movie is basically back, but much bigger and deadlier this time around. As for the humans, well, they have a new base and a new mission. 
That base is Bridgehead, and their new mission is to colonize Pandora. This time, they're not just back to mine on Obtanium, they're here to take over the entire planet. We're also going to be seeing lots more of Pandora. We're going to be meeting an entirely new tribe who live in their own unique ocean environment, which is itself also inhabited by lots of new creatures. This new tribe is called the Mekaina, and they live in harmony with the sea. Their home is in a coral reef, and they're heavily inspired by Polynesian culture here on Earth. The leaders of this tribe are Ronal, played by Kate Winslet, and Tonawari, played by Cliff Curtis. Jake and his family seek refuge with the Metkayina after fleeing from their rainforest home that we're all familiar with from the original movie. As for the new creatures, there are many new different types in the ocean, including the Skimwing, the Tulkoon, and the Elu. These all serve different purposes, with the Skimwing being more similar to the Ikran, aggressive mounts for battle, the Elu being more similar to the Dire Horses of the Sea, for travelling around the reefs and exploring, and the Tulkoon being very strange, highly intelligent, whale-like beings who can communicate with the Na'vi. As far as the plot goes, Quaritch and the RDA obviously have some serious issues and a big grudge against Jake Sully. The aftermath of this and how it plays out is the core focus of Avatar The Way of Water. Overall, you can expect an action-packed epic blockbuster with a lot of heart and universal themes that will truly resonate with a global audience. This is a James Cameron movie, and it's a sequel. It's going to blow your socks off. Let's get it done. One of the questions I've repeatedly seen is, what's the best way to watch Avatar in theatres? What format should I choose? First of all, try and see it in 3D if you can. This is how it's supposed to be seen. I'd only say see it in 2D if you can't see it in 3D, or if there's no cinema near you showing it in 3D. If you're watching it in 3D, make sure it's also in HFR, or high frame rate. The HFR is used as a subtle tool to make the action scenes look even better in 3D, and don't worry about it looking like The Hobbit or Gemini Man, James Cameron has made sure it won't look like either of those. When it comes to what format you should be looking for, in my opinion, Dolby Cinema is the best. Then I'd go for it in IMAX, and specifically IMAX Laser if you can. After that, anything that says Laser is a great choice. And then after that, Standard 3D. For 2D, try to watch in IMAX Laser or Dolby, then anything with Laser, and then Digital IMAX, then Standard. Don't overly worry about the format though. Whatever way you see Avatar The Way of Water, you're going to get an amazing movie. To further be ready, you can either rewatch Avatar, or check out this Avatar recap right here. As always, I want to thank the Basin Robust Network, and thank you for watching.